Hey, when will I YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my editing job properly, I should be in black and white right now. If not, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. AKA I cocked up. Right, you will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you read any of it, the description. It's a neutral palette on 4F Beauty. Um, sorry, I really should have given you a warning to sit down. Are you okay down there? Yeah, uh, I know it was a bit of a shock, sorry. Uh, okay, right, this is the Tarty Beauty Volume 1 palette. Uh, as I'm sure everyone will recognise. This I hate. This I, I mm, this is the only thing about this soft touch packaging. Fingerprints everywhere. However, if you would like to see exactly which colours I've chosen, which formula of colours I've chosen, how well or otherwise they apply, and what I think of it, well my friend you have the best seat in the house, have I have said for some considerable time, oft it echoed elsewhere in less imaginative channels, but I'm backed by Sammy the soft sloth straw. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. It's actually a late one for me, it's 20 past 11 at night. Um, but I'm in pain and I can't sleep and I've been wanting to play with this baby since it arrived. Um, I know it's a neutral, but it's so goddamn pretty. Look at that. Like anybody doesn't already know what this looks like. Thank you, Tarty, for making it fold back properly and not making all of this reflective so you can actually show it on screen. Make sure I've got it all in. There we go. Um, I did do swatches. If I remember, I'll put them up. If I forget, I forget. Um, that was helpful, wasn't it, really? I have been wanting to have a go at this for quite a while, though. Um, and it arrived. And I was... I'd got some collabs I had to get filmed. And I got so many... Um, palettes that I wanted to play with that it was just like <gasps> but I I just I really really want to play with this one so I'm going to I'm going to start with the proper big fluffy brush I haven't got a clue what colours I'm going to go into yet I genuinely don't know if I'm going to use the gl I normally hate press glitters in things but when I swatched these I was quite impressed so there may be some glitter action on the channel. I know. Who am I? Who I am is someone who does um, teaching on my channel. So I go at a speed that everyone should be able to keep up with. That's partly because of my chronic pain and partly because I want you to be able to keep up with what I'm doing, whether you're a beginner or an expert or whatever. Um, I also, for those of us on the correct side of 40, who's eyesight is perhaps not quite what it used to be and are watching on a tiny little phone screen I zoom right in all you see are my eyes there's a, a number of reasons for this partly the, 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 the eyesight thing partly um, because that way when I'm grimacing with pain you don't get to see it because it will be distracting trust me 
um, yeah I always uh, start my film off by talking about the difference between deep set and hooded lids because they are very very similar in appearance they're very very similar in the way that eyeshadow wears on them throughout the day but the actual application process to get them looking as good as possible is just slightly different and I see so many people with deep set eyes saying they've got hooded lids so if they're following tutorials for hooded lids they're not making the best of their eye shape so I'm going to insert that clip in just a minute it is up close and personal it is just my eyes so don't jump and scream when that happens uh, and once that's done I will see you at the other end of it to start playing with this palette which has tempted me for about five days now each clip now um, my eyes have this primer on it this is the Crown Pebble primer in blank page cotton I do have a discount code for this it is not affiliated I don't earn money from it but if you use my code you save I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them the reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour you don't have that trade-off with this you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour now she does six different shades of this at the moment white is the lightest the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black then there are three different skin tone shades as well so you should be able to find one that will work for you um, I apply this with a flat brush just a very light layer and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye now I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get I get transference of color onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter even with glitter glue I get a bare patch in the middle because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't so they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right so I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are with my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner you can't see a lot of it but you can see it so I haven't got hooded lids it's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus if I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap 
if you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, as I said, I'm going to start with a fluffy brush. It is clean, it's just stained. Um, now the way that this is laid out, each colour has its own name. So the black column, for example, is called Memory. The brown one is Ritual. The orange one is Story. The caramel light brown is Soothe. The creamy sort of um, champagne one is Aura and the red one is Poet and then each one has a type so you've got for example if you're going down the red shade which is Poet you've got Poet Matte, Poet Sequin which is a matte with mica pigments in it, Poet Metallic and then Poet Glitter. So uh, I'm going to start with Poet Matte. There's a lot of kick up in the pan. That doesn't worry me, I just tap back off. I'd rather get too much kick up in the pan and know that it's picking up pigment. Um, I can go back and pick up that kick up when I'm building the colour or when I'm doing the second eye. Always hold the brush right at the end so you put as little pressure on your lids as possible. And we're going to start with the Viennese Waltz of Blending, which is natural turns towards the nose, a fleckle when you get there, and reverse turns to come back. The reason for this, I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds. Skin on my eyelids moves. But I know teenagers who've always been slim, they have the same issue. So by doing the Viennese Waltz rather than the windshield wiper, you are less likely to get those telltale white sort of like uh, tiger stripe giveaways that your lid has folded over on itself. So, let's start about halfway between my natural crease and my brow and just see what Miss Tarty can do when it comes to an eyeshadow palette. And this is actually going on really quite smoothly. Reds are not that easy to create, especially blue toned reds like this. Um, orange toned reds are much easier to formulate and to get them blendable. But this sort of cranberry blue toned red is much more difficult. I think. To zoom you out just a fraction. There we go. And you can see this is building up really nicely with not a huge amount of fallout, if any. Uh, that's partly due to the fact that I've tapped a lot of the kick out back off of the brush. But that being said, it is actually performing nicely. There's no patchiness there at all. I know it looks as if I've got a dark line here on camera, but in my mirror it, it's just not visible there. So it's something that the Ultra HD is picking up that my eyesight is not. Same thing this side. Now the reason that I don't do one eye and then do the other eye afterwards is because um, you can see this eye moves around a lot more than the other eye does. Uh, this one was pulled around a lot when I was five years old. Uh, when they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly before it went totally blind in that eye. 
Um, and also with my fibro I can get puffy. I can get very swollen. My hands, my feet, my legs um, and my face can get extremely puffy. And there are times that one eyelid is puffier than it normally is. And in, you know, there's, when that's the case, you, you know, your eyes are not symmetrical to start with. Unless you're James Charles and you photoshop them that way afterwards. But there's times that I, you know, I always sit back, relax my brows and check to make sure they look the same shape both sides. Because there are times that I actually have to do a slightly different shape one side to get them to look the same. And if I've already blended other colours on top, I may not necessarily realise that I need to, you know, move it up a millimetre, move it right a millimetre. Um, but it's surprising how that, that tiny amount of difference can make in terms of your eyes then looking finished, you know. Right, I'm going to clean this brush on a clean washcloth. Actually, I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that red. Just deepen this side up a little bit. Just fractionally. So yeah, normally I'm filming at stupid o'clock in the morning. Today I'm filming at stupid o'clock at night, which means that I'm going to do this, take some photographs of it, and then take it all back off and <laughs> do my nighttime routine. So needless to say, I didn't put SPF on today. I just moisturised and primed. That's better. That looks more, more even. I might go into Soothe, which is that, that caramelly shade. Or, no, actually, I'm going to go into Aura, which is the champagne shade, just to buff that edge a little bit. I'm going to use the same brush. And just, if you're going to buff the edge of a shade, always start off with your brush half on the shade, half off it. I just find that you get a smoother blend that way. And then if you start above it and kind of work down. The reason I always start at the outside edge and work in is because if you do end up putting too much powder down or too much colour, it's much easier to sort it out when your nose isn't in the way. Now you can see that's that's done the dual job of softening that edge and also just softening the colour slightly so it fades up, which is the effect that I wanted. So that's good. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. Well, if it hasn't been a good one, then I hope tomorrow's is better. And if you're at the start of your day, I hope your day is as fabulous as you are, darling. I know it's unusual to see me working with a neutral palette. But this had enough colour in it with the orange and the red and the black. You know, it's 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 half colourful, half neutral, so I could kind of live with that. Plus, I was really intrigued to try this formula out, I've got to be honest. Right, to clean the brush off, and then I'm going to get a slightly more tapered blending brush like this and I'm going to go into memory matte 
which is the black. Again, an awful lot of kick up. And I'm gonna, this is where I'm going to follow my crease. If you've moved your crease, this is the point that you now follow the line that you've laid down for it. Okay? So I'm just going to do little tiny circular movements to build this colour up. And run that about two thirds of the way along, and then just sort of drag the rest of it into the inner corner, only really blending sort of the outer and middle third. This is a very, very pigmented black because I haven't had to dip back in yet. And I tapped off a lot. So if you're new to using colours, then just be careful with the black. Just going to run that onto the outer third of my mobile lid to add a little bit of definition there. Just sort of straighten that line out a little bit and just continue with the blending. Basically, with blending, unless you're going for an editorial look, you blend until you feel like your hand's going to fall off, and then you blend just a little bit longer. That's actually really nice, really pretty. Super smoky as well, like that. Again, circular about two thirds of the way along and then just kind of drag down the last bit. But you can see on this eye where I've got that super deep creasing there, how it really does emphasise. So I do actually have to stretch my lid out. Do not do this with yours, unless you already have the same issue as me. Otherwise you will get that issue. And I can assure you once you've got it, there's no getting rid of it without surgery. And if I'm paying someone to hurt me, I want a tattoo at the end of it. Or a piercing. So again, just really buffing this black. Really getting it. Really blending into that red that you've already laid down. So what do we think about Tarty? Do we think she's coming back or do we think she's just going to concentrate on trying to start a family without the pressures of YouTube and everything? When she comes back, will she mention anything or will she just come straight back with a review or something? What do we think? Do you want her back? Do you miss her? Or have you sort of, have you found other channels that fulfil your kind of review needs? This is such a lovely black. This is probably 
one of the blackest blacks that I've got. This one, the black from the Kaleidos Sci-Fi Green palette, and the one from the Pretty Little Palettes palette that I've got are probably the three densest blacks that I've got. Right, I'm going to get a just a clean brush now. I'm just going to use that to make sure I've got that black and that red really, really softly buffed together. This would actually be a good look if you're going to do something like Morticia or, you know, Black Widow look for Halloween. This would actually work as an eye look for that. You could always add, you know, maybe a cobweb eyeliner or some other kind of graphic decal to your face. You can see that it's definitely working in terms of blending. That's really pretty. Now, I know she said it works best to apply the shimmers with your finger, but I don't like doing that, especially now I've got my stick on nails back on. I'm just going to tidy up a little bit of fallout that I had there from the black. So just a bit of micellar water on a on a pad. I always keep one handy when I'm doing makeup. So I don't do that now, it's gonna really bug me when I'm editing. Right, I am gonna start off using a flat brush to see if the glitter will actually apply. I'm not going to use glitter glue tonight because basically I'm going to bed shortly. I will, once the glitter is on the brush, wet it with just some setting spray. Um, and for glitter I would advise using setting spray. I'm going to go into the Poet Glitter, which is the red one, initially, to see how well it will actually pick up on a bristle brush. Okay, well it picks up. I'm just going to try wetting it now. Sometimes this will completely knock all the glitter off. Right, the ferrule is damp, so I'm just going to tuck it into my knuckles and spin. We don't want moisture getting down here and loosening the bristles, because then we won't have a brush, we'll have a stick. I'm going to pop this right into that inner corner. Well, that looks like it's applied okay with the brush to me. And that's without a glitter glue underneath it. Okay. Now with the other eye, I do have to stretch the lid out again do that in a corner because otherwise what happens is this will just sit in the creases rather than being blended onto the lid um, and then you know were this being done for a night out as it dries it would start cascading down my face and getting into my eye which a is painful and b just looks awful so just going to very gently stretch the eye out, but only as far as I need to, to get the 
creased bit blended. And then you can see I'm not pulling it right out to my ear hole. And then I'm going to gently let go. Dry the brush and pick up a little bit more glitter because this eye does take more because of all of the, the creasing just there. But you can see that has gone on remarkably well for a glitter using a brush. I, I, I have got a silicon brush here that I was going to resort to if you know this this didn't actually work but to me it looks like it's uh, working quite well. Right, and now I'm going to go into the memory glitter, which is the black. It's most unlike me to, to like a wet, you know, a pressed glitter. I don't mind loose glitter, but normally I hate pressed glitters in palettes. This might change my mind. I'm just going to apply this one to the outer part of that mobile lid that so far had none on it. And then gently buff over the two to blend where they meet. Hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. I am really very pleasantly surprised so far with this palette. Um, it's not easy for us to get over here in the UK but thankfully somebody was selling it on Depop and had proof of purchase and everything so I felt safe enough. Plus I've not really yet over here anyway seen any fakes of this particular palette. Again, just going to blend over where the two meet. That is just delightful. Right, my lovely ones. I am going to pause you while I go off camera and put some base products on etc and I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you for you instant for me I'll go away a little bit hello I am back I did normal brows today I know who am I right flat topped bra and I'm going to go into Memory Sequin. That's the, the black one with, the, kind of a matte one with shimmer bits in. Sort of satin, I suppose. I'm just going to run that. Oh, no, 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 no,
I spot it after you press record? Yes, I'm flinching this side. I'm, I'm blind in this side. I have no peripheral vision and the viewfinder is a long way away from my 46 year old apples, okay? Regular viewers will tell you how many times I've poked myself in the bloody eye. All times and all that hot dinners, I'll tell you. I'm going to go into the poet sequin, which is the red one with mica bits in. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl, flat topped but chunky, which is, I love this for buffing out the lower lash line, but you can use any chunky kind of blending brush really. I just want to give like a hint of, of that red under there to tie the look together and to kind of grunge it up a little bit. It's a neutral palette and I come out with this look. Yep. Definitely me. Most people went straight into the browns and the orange and I'm like, yeah, black and red, bring it on. really really like this and I have to be honest that surprises me I was not expecting to like this palette quite as much as I do right I'm going to go into my Kaleidos Star Surfer highlight. This is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay well over a decade ago. I'm going to pop a little bit of this just up under the tail of my brow. Apparently folks, along with everything else that gravity grabs, it grabs your brows as you get older. So just adding a little bit of lightness there. You don't have to use a shimmer, you can just use a, a matte shadow couple of shades lighter than your skin tone-ish um, just to give the illusion of lift just at the outer corners there and I shall add a little bit of this onto the inner corner and as always I like to bring it down and just continue it and blend it into the start of the under eye Right, my beautiful ones, I am going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to chuck some more of this lovely highlight on my face, put some mascara on, put a lippy on, do something with the hair, and I'll be back with my first impression thoughts on this palette. Don't go anywhere. I am back, my lovelies. Uh, I use that same highlight to uh, shimmy 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 as opposed to shimmy 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 uh, <laughs> it's late I'm losing the plot I use my essence slash princess with the orange lid suddenly realized 
didn't check my teeth before I pressed record but we're okay pretty sure everyone who's used makeup for any length of time recognizes this red it's Mac Ruby Woo absolute classic and I just thought it finished the look off really nicely and uh, my my setting spray of the day is my Slay All Day in Mint Chalk Chip, which I'm nearly out of, but fortunately, I got a backup set up there. I do have a code for Gerard, it's in the description. If you use it on my link, I do earn a little bit from that. If you don't want to do that and support the channel, that's absolutely fine. There's plenty of codes out there you can use. However, it will save you, I believe, 30%. But we are talking about this. Um, okay, technically I only used two shades, but I have used three of the different formulas. Um, and I did use the darkest shade and the shade most difficult to formulate, which is the red. And I'm really impressed. I was super impressed by that glitter it picked up on a brush like I said normally if, I've, if I'm using pressed glitter I'll use this which is my silicon brush to pick it up with I didn't need to do that I could pick it up on an ordinary brush um, and you saw there wasn't a huge amount of fallout from that glitter on my cheeks at all so I'm really, really impressed with the formulation of those press glitters and I'm very, very surprised because I never thought I'd hear myself say that about a palette. Um, obviously, I'm not going to be able to tell you where time because I may film one other film after this. It's only 20 past midnight, it's not that late. Um, I may do another film, seeing as how I've done all of this, might as well make use of it. Um, but obviously after that it's coming off and I'm going to bed. However, I will continue to use this off screen. Um, and I will let you know in a roundup of all of the new palettes, my thoughts on this in probably a couple of weeks time. Um, in the meantime, do I think this is worth the money? Depends. If you're in America and you can get it without paying ridiculous delivery and ridiculous import charges, yes. If you're over here, see if you can find it on Depop. Um, or maybe if you're going to be ordering a load of different bits from a load of different... Um, companies like, I mean, I've, I've looked at Luxin, I've looked at Davina, but they don't offer a tracked service, it's only tracked to the edge of the UK, US. As soon as it leaves the US, there's no tracking, and if it gets lost, they're not responsible. So, if I order from them, I'm going to have to use a, a shipping company. So, if you're looking at doing something like that or ordering from someone who doesn't deliver to the UK, doesn't have that option then it may be worth popping one of these in just bearing in mind you are still going to get hit with your 20% tax on arrival into the UK if you've got someone who's travelling to America anytime soon and can grab one for you or you have someone in America who could buy it and send it across as a gift because obviously you're allowed a slightly higher value on gifts before you start paying tax on it so if you've got someone who wants to buy it for you for Christmas and send it over as a gift then um, yeah I don't think you'd be disappointed with it there's admittedly I don't know how much I'm going to use the very very neutral shade the, the champagne shade I'll probably use the glitter and the um, the metallic but then having said that I did use it today the matte to just soften up the very edge of this red so who knows uh, it may surprise me still but in the meantime this gets a tentative thumbs up from me uh, and I said I will confirm
in a future film whether that decision changes or not. Now, if you're one of my 4F babies, please, please double check your store subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you all very rudely without your permission. Um, so just double check that you're definitely still subscribed because apparently they're leaving me in your suggested feed, which is very, very sneaky, so you're not necessarily realising you've been unsubbed. Uh, while you're there, it's also worth double checking if you put notifications on that your notifications, not just for me, but for all of the channels that you follow, um, are set to all because mine got knocked back to um, personalised a couple of weeks ago. So I had to spend an afternoon going through changing all of those back. That was great fun, I can't tell you. Uh, if you are new here, and have fallen over me somehow. Hi, hello, welcome. Hope you've enjoyed it here. Uh, this is pretty much what you get on this channel. You get me blethering at you about everything and nothing in particular whilst applying coloured pigments to my face or answering questions if it's a tag film. Um, it would be lovely if you'd like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. It's super easy to do. You hit that subscribe button down there and turn it from red to grey. Then you ring my bell. Ring my bell if I can remember how to click. And choose all notifications. And then hopefully YouTube will actually email you and tell you when my new films are coming out. Although they don't seem to be doing much of that lately. Uh, talking of my films though, I do have an awful lot that you can watch. I've got other product reviews, uh, tutorials, collabs, challenges, tags. I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So there should be something to interest you. Uh, so basically, you know, as I've said from what feels like time immemorial, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, pick a playlist. And indulge my darlings. Right. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.